God said, I want to heal the broken places in your soul so you can view yourself the way I see you and I can get the full use and benefit out of your life. And I want to bring you from a place of stuck and bring you to an a, a abundant place, a rich place, a wealthy place in your life. I want to bring you to a place where you healthy about yourself so you're not intimidated by nobody you don't shrink back from opportunities you run to opportunities and you don't see everybody else as being the one that succeeds but you see what well, why not me see some of you need to say well, well why not why it won't work for me what's the difference between those that make it and those that didn't make it they're thinking You have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to every type man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did he say every man? See, I just told you. See, some of you, you commit stuff to leeches. He said, what I've given you, only give it to faithful men. See, the problem is you trying to give stuff to everybody. Everybody don't deserve it. Why would you go and buy a Louis Vuitton dress and take it to somebody living under a bridge? We know they need clothes, but not the Louis. They don't know the value. So he said, listen, what I commit to you I need you to commit it to faith for me. Listen, let me tell you something. It's too much great revelation that come out of this house for it to leave and sit in the seat. When you leave out of here, you take it with you and you give it to faith for people. You teach them, you train them, you equip them with what you get. I'm going to tell you, you want to grow to another level, start giving away what's been given to you. You're going to start growing because the more you give out, God going to give it back to you again. But the more you sit on it, the more it's going to die on the inside of you. Let me help you understand something. If you don't give it out, you will become like the Dead Sea. Let me help you the revelation of Dead Sea. The Dead Sea receives from all these bodies of water. But this is the thing. It gives to none. And so why do they call it the Dead Sea? Because nothing lives in it. It's salted water. You can float on it. it water getting your eyes. You're going blind. No uh, marine life lives in that water. Because it receives and it never gives out. So what you receive, you give to faithful people. Let me help you understand something about this vision. We don't exist for us. Hold on, that, that didn't go over too well because I, I told you that we enlisting you in this army and now we got to turn you into a soldier. We got to get civilian life off of you. Some of you, that civilian life is religion. So you come from religious institutions where they only exist for themselves. But now you're part of a world vision that's bigger than you and it's not about you. That's why we ain't finna be rubbing you down and patty caking you. You here to grow up to help somebody else up. You ain't here, oh, man, nobody came to see me. Nobody called me. We're gonna equip you. Call yourself. Get you another phone. Say, hello, self. You healed. You healed by Jesus. Oh, I am? Yeah. I'm going to church today. Okay, that's why we called you, self. <laughs> you know, I ain't never understood. Folks that know where they supposed to be talking about ain't nobody called and checked on me. They ain't called and checked on your tail at work because you knew you didn't show up. You don't have no paid time off. You gonna get your big rusty dusty and go to work. We ain't finna be babying you around here. We're gonna equip you. 
We're going to get that civilian life off of you so you can become a soldier that can do something. <laughs> He's so hard. Call me drill sergeant. Here we go. I want you to see this. So he said, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same thou should commit to faithful men. You shall be able to, to what? To what? Say, I, I should, should be able, be able to, to teach, teach others, others also. also. Now answer the question, can you? Oh, I, I want to hear them yeses. Let me hear what the yeses. Cause I'm, cause, yeah, I want to hear. I want to raise your hand because so, I'm giving out quizzes. Come on, raise your hand high. Yeah, I got you. Because see, I'm going to give a quiz on baptism with Holy Spirit. I'm going to give a quiz on casting out a devil. I'm giving quiz. Listen, we, we got a lot of stuff we can do quizzes on. Because see, we give you the information to do something with it. Not to sit around, ooh, ooh, that's good, ooh, that's good, ooh, 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 oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, that ain't why we gave you that. When you finish shouting, what can you do? When you finish all your shouting, what can you do? No devil gonna get out the way cause you can shout. You got to shout your blessing down. There ain't, ain't no blessing. No way in the Bible tell you shout your blessing down. He said, speak to that mountain. Tell it to move. You're going to get out of my way, mountain. <laughs> hey, hey. And ain't nothing wrong with shouting. I ain't, don't, don't take that wrong. But it's the equipping. You got to be able to teach others. That's what you're learning for. Because guess what? When you get equipped, our reach goes farther. Yes. Yes. <sighs> See, just think of it. Come on, come on. Let's see, how many we got? Two, four, six, seven, seven people right here on this row right here. Each one of them reached 500 people. How much is that? How many? 3,500. That's 35,000, ain't it? How many? How many is it? 3,500 people. I don't even know. I, you know. I had a 1.6, so yeah. What you asking me? How much is it? 3,500. Y'all sure? I forgot my own illustration. 500 times 7. Oh, okay. 3,500 people. That's why I'm a preacher. They ain't call me. I'm not a math major. Come on. So, so look, I want you to see this, though. Just these seven people, they didn't touch 3,500 folk. So what if we go through every row of seven? How many people just this room right here? Oh, my God. And you sitting there watching the news and talking about we need to vote somebody in the office. We don't need to vote nobody in the office. We need to equip the saints to do something. Because if you want to change your city, change your neighborhood, change your family, change a state, a nation in the world, equip the saints and let them start working. That's how we change our city. Y'all on pins and need about the next election. Oh, I sure hope Donald Trump don't get in there. Oh, I hope Bernie Sanders don't get in there. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, I hope that. At the end of the day, the one I serve hadn't been voted out nor voted in. He is Lord 
when the President Obama was in the White House. He was Lord when President Bush was in the White House. He was Lord when J.F. Kennedy, Kennedy, when Hoover, whoever you want to name, he still been Lord. He was Lord when Caesar was back there. He was Lord when Pharaoh thought he was Lord. He was Lord when Nebuchadnezzar thought he run some and he had to put him in check and say, I just want you to know that I rule in the affairs of men. So why are you so concerned, overly concerned with that that you have no control over when you can spend that energy with that which you do have control over and create some change? Touch your name and say, by the way, you do know the hope of the world is the church. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violent take it by force, took some. See, all, all I'm doing is stirring you up so your mind can come where I'm at. I need you to see what I see. I don't need you to get caught in four walls. When I say something, don't look at where you currently sit. Because I'm not going to talk from that place. I'm always talking in the future. God don't even talk to you from where you sit. When you get a prophetic word, he don't talk to you where you currently sit. He talk to you where he want you to be. God don't talk to you where you currently sit. He talked to you where he wants you to be. That's why he called those things that be not as though they were. That's why he called you the righteousness of God and you just got out of fornication last night. Because as soon as you repent, you back in right standing because he made you righteous. You didn't earn it. Man, I just came, something about this second attempt, I just can't get, get going on through here. But how, how much time I got? Let me see, how, how much time we got? 14 minutes. Ooh, 14 minutes, 14 minutes. I said, I got 14, and now it's 13. <laughs> Come on. Let's read verse 3. Y'all are so crazy at this church. <laughs> Thou therefore endure hardness as a... No, notice he said endure. So as a soldier, you built to last. You designed to endure stuff. You don't see... You don't see no... Oh, they shooting at us. Oh, they shoot... Oh, oh, no. Brother Tyler, did you have any soldiers like that with you running? You built to be hard. You built to endure. See, the problem, you made saints a weak thing. See, the problem, you don't know God was calling you to be militant. Hey, see, the problem, we don't made this old weak self baggily church that's not the church of Jesus uh eh, don't devil no let me help you understand something listen I want you to see this the armor wasn't designed to protect you because you running the armor was designed to protect you as you take in territory. So you ain't got armor on cause you running from the devil. 
You got arm on because you're going to take stuff. So on your way taking, he's shooting at you. You resisting and taking it. But you got that old weak mindset. But we're a militant church. We take stuff. See, that, that's why some of you, you need to learn how to pray more than one way. You need to know when the prayer is petition and when prayer is declaring. See, there's some things that you done made a petition about that you, didn't, you shouldn't even petition because it's already yours. So as opposed to praying that he give you, you should have been declaring that it be. Oh, I'm ready to go home. See, I would give y'all a little more, but y'all didn't give me no money, but I'm going to give me some. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, I got an offering. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, that's tripping. Listen. The thing you got to understand, you got to press to that other level. Whereas you praying about something that you shouldn't pray about. You should just declare it. If you a believer, you don't have to pray to be healed. You decree it. Why do you have to pray to be healed? When he has already said, by his strife, you are here. He said, you are. Okay, okay, since you don't believe that, let me help you. You don't pray that somebody gets saved when they're ready to get saved, do you? What do you do? You just decree them into salvation. Repeat after me. You don't pray, Lord, if this be your will for this person to be saved when they pray this prayer please accept it no you just decree it because he's already made it available Lord will you please open the windows of heaven for me no give your tithes and offering and he said the windows gonna automatically open up Your mindset got to change. We got to turn you into a soldier. But see, too many of you got civilian life on you. You, you still want to fraternize with the civs. With the civilian. I just shorten it. You want to act like a civilian. Guess what? You're going to get killed. Trying to act like a civilian. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Man, I'm so stuck. Look, look. Look at what he said in uh, verse 3 again. Thou therefore endure hardness as a what? Good soldier of who? Not just a natural soldier, but a soldier of who? Jesus Christ. But this is the verse I want to get to. No man that wore it. Say, say you know you're in a war, right? So look, he said, no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this world that he may please him that enlisted him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, this is the thing you got to understand. When you sign up in the armed services, you're not trying to please yourself. You trying to please the U.S. government or whichever government you gun, you under. So when you enlist in God's army, you ain't, it ain't about you no more. Amen. Civilians think about their self. They think about their comfort. Those that are warriors and soldiers in the army of the Lord, they think about pleasing him. That's where their passion and their drive comes with pleasing him. We got these old weak soldiers that's caught up in da 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 da. Here we in boot camp, and you over there on ESPN. Come on, let's shoot. I'll be there in a minute. Hold on. 
Stephen A. Demo. <laughs> you so funny. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's scandal coming. Oh, hold on. Oh, Olivia. Oh, girl, you just so funny. Oh, hold, hold on. Empire, Empire coming on. I'll be out there in a minute, y'all. <laughs> oh, you know. I, so now you're entangled in all this stuff where you should have been sharpening your skills as a soldier. So because you didn't sharpen your skills and you didn't properly get developed and trained as a soldier, now your passion is gone. Now your skill is gone and you don't know how to walk in victory, even though we all have access to the same weapons. Why is it some walk in victory and some don't? You got the same uh, AK-47, AR-9, whatever, I don't know all them gun names. You got the same, yeah. what you got? Grenade, Grenade. <laughs> rocket launchers, tanks, flighter jets, everything. But you don't know how to use yours. Because you've been entangled in civilian life. You're entangled in civilian life. you caught up in civilian. Oh, that's just too, y'all just too much with this. Y'all just going too much. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, SEAL team. Now it's time to take out Osama bin Laden. Now all that training you did in the cold, freezing waters. All them trainings you did, sliding down out of helicopters with undetected, being able to go behind enemy line. Now it's time to put up a shut up. But if you ain't properly prepared of knowing how to go to war, now and you've been stayed and you didn't stay entangled with civilian and in civilian living, you're going to die. That's the problem. We don't have enough soldiers in the body of Christ. Because we got those that's trying to be prepared to be soldiers entangled with civilian living. You more engaged with civilian living than being a soldier. And it's going to get you killed and possibly others with you. Because you're entangled. Notice the word he used, entangled. Entangled. Civilian life. Entangled. Civilian life. Natural living. Natural living. Natural living. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he said, you acting like mere men. Now, here you are, a supernatural being, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power. You got the all-knowing God on the inside of you that knows everything, that has the answer and the power to do something about it, and you worried. Because you're a civilian. You're entangled as a civilian. The reason you can't believe God, because your faith is in reverse. Your faith is in fear. Because that's what you meditate is fear. But the Bible said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in order for your faith to increase, you got to spend time meditating the word. But you spend time meditating civilian living, and that's why your faith is reversed, and you got faith in failure. Time to stir your passion. You don't have time to be, you got to learn how to be a soldier. You don't just walk in, enlist. And then they, they put you on the front line. You got to go through boot camp. Yeah. Then after boot camp, you got to go through intensive training. But too many of us stay at the elementary level. You're no good elementary. What, what you going to do for the kingdom elementary? I'll I be with the supplies. <laughs> they can watch themselves. Well, I need you to know and know how to use this rifle. 
Get that knife in your hand. Learn how to do some hand to hand combat. How long are you going to need other people to pray for you? I remember we went to one, one of the hardest seasons of our life. Enemy attacking both our girls and everything. I didn't need to come to you, y'all. Y'all, y'all, pray for me. Pray for your pastor. We really going through difficult times. <laughs> Still pray, preach, prophesy, do everything, and you wasn't going to know. Because I know how to pray for myself. And I'm not saying you're a baby Christian, you need to get prayer and you need others to hook up with you. Come on, do that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to one sitting there receiving, receiving, and you ain't doing nothing and you ain't growing. Because you're just getting information and you're not getting revelation. See, there's no way I would listen to this, this CD today and not listen to it over and over again. Because you're going to miss the revelation. But as you keep listening to it, God give you more insight more revelation to what he's saying today. Wow, what a powerful message. I know you were blessed by this message today. And I just want to talk to those that have been convicted by the Spirit of God. And you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to be born again. I want to give you that opportunity right now. The Bible just clearly tells us to repent of our sins and to put our trust in what Jesus has done for us. So why don't you do this? Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, Please forgive me for sinning against you. I am a sinner and I need a savior. Jesus, come in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Cleanse me, wash me from all my sins and set me free from all the works of the devil and write my name in your book of life. If you prayed that from your heart right now and you meant it, right now you are born again. You are a child of the Most High God. I'm telling you, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and we want to help you to grow in that relationship. So why don't you do this? Call us at 901-745-8149 or visit us here at 2019 Ball Road and we want to help you to grow in that relationship with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the family. Me. Also, those of you who've been watching us for a long time and you kept saying and you've been saying over and over, I got to get to that church. I got to go visit. Well, take this as your personal invite. Come and see me. We would love to hug you, shake your hand and let you know uh, how much we so appreciate you've been watching us and tuning in each week. Come and be a part of the glory of God that is manifesting in this place and see the demonstrations, people being healed, people being delivered and set free. I'm telling you, your life would never, ever be the same. We got two worship services that you can come and worship with us at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And we know you're going to be blessed. And also we have discipleship on, at 7 p.m. every Wednesday night where we're helping people to grow in their relationship with the Lord. So please come and be my very special guest. We would love to see you. To all of our friends, our partners, and those that tune in all the time, we're so thankful and we love you. And remember, stay connected. God bless you.